Okay, um, now you have the rectangle uh, in your layer one, so it's uh, basically uh, also an item. It's a special type of item, a rectangle item, and you can also move it around like you would with any texture item. Okay, the only thing that you can't do with a rectangle item is rotate it. Okay, because uh, it is defined by its position, width, and height. Okay. Okay. Now the same thing for a circle. You might want to add a circle for whatever uh, game logic uh, element in your game. Okay. So you double click on the circle, then you click where the center should be, and then you open up the circle, and once you're done, you left click again, and now the circle gets added to your level. Okay. A circle uh, also can be rotated, of course, but it can be scaled. So you can scale the circle. Okay. So when it gets exported, it gets exported with exactly uh, the properties that appear here. So a circle is defined by position and radius. Okay. So there's no uh, vertices or something like that exported. The same for rectangles. So they're only there for for game logic stuff, basically. And you have a path, which might be the path that some enemies should follow, or the path that a moving platform should follow. And you can uh, define a path by, again, double-clicking on it. And then you can left-click uh, where the points should be. And once you're done, as it says here, middle-click, add the path to the level. So once you're done, you middle-click, and then you have the path item. So these three are the primitive items. Okay. Um, a path item can be rotated since uh, when it's exported, it gets exported through uh, uh, its vertices. So it, each vertex is, uh, or each point, uh, is saved separately. So it can be rotated, and it can be scaled also. Okay. You can also uh, edit the path by, uh, or edit the points of the path by uh, moving the mouse over a point. Then the mouse cursor changes to this hand symbol, and then you can uh, only uh, drag around this point of the path in order to fine-tune the path, for example. Okay, like this. Okay, now. Um, obviously, um, the primitive items only make sense when you can add some information to them. Okay, uh, if they're just, uh, if you leave them alone like this, you probably won't uh, be able to do much with them. And that's where another cool feature comes uh, into the play, which uh, is called custom properties. You can add custom properties to any item of your uh, level um, also to the level itself so uh, let's see how that works for example um, let's uh, assume that uh, pff, I don't know this circle might represent some collectible item and when collected you want the player score to increase by uh, 5,000 points so you might want to you need a custom property which tells you that uh, this item is worth 5,000 points, okay? So let's add a custom property to this by right-clicking on um, the item here in the tree view and select Add Custom Property, okay? So now um, you're asked for a name for the custom property, so let's call it Prop1. You can add a description if you want, description1, and then you have uh, five different types that are supported right now. Uh, the first one is free text, which is basically for any uh, string or numerical value, since uh, the level will later be exported as an XML file um, and will later be parsed in. Uh, free text is basically for anything uh, that you want to type in uh, in order to change it. If you just want to 
exchange between two uh, possible states like true or false, then this might be the type of your choice, which is boolean, which is just true or false, of course. Then there is vector2 supported, which uh, has the x and y component and uh, also a small uh, editor kind of thing that I will show you in a minute. You have the color type color so you, that you can select the color exactly like here fill color for example and another very cool thing which is item which means that you can assign any other item of your level to this item so this way you can uh, connect items together okay okay let's uh, start with the first free text and now you can see that here in the property grid you have custom properties as a category uh, and you have prop1 with description1 and since it was free text uh, I can type in anything okay okay um, now let's add a custom property of type boolean so this is property2 okay so it is a boolean type. Nothing special. Let's go on with vector 2. So this is property 3. Type vector 2. And now as you can see you can uh, edit the x and y value like this. Or you can click here. Oh you don't see it. Uh, okay. And now you get this, uh, which is a small uh, editor type of thing that I wrote. Uh, it's a UI type editor actually called. And you can um, either edit the X and Y values or the angle and length. Or you can also drag here and drop uh, the vector 2 around. So um, the length uh, is preserved and then the other components are computed automatically. Okay. So this is just for convenience and um, of course this only probably makes sense if your vector 2 is to represent some kind of direction or movement uh, this probably doesn't make much sense if it just represents a position an absolute position in your level but okay it's there anyway you can use it here so this is uh, type vector 2 now let's see the other types color nothing special as you would expect it you get the color picker like this okay so of course nothing happens because these are custom properties so they are there to be parsed in by your game application and can be used there so the editor doesn't know what to do with them it, um, it only um, supports adding them and editing them okay Okay. And finally, let's add a property of type item to show you what you can do with this. This is good if, for example, um, you have, uh, let's say, uh, you have a teleport, and um, this could be the entrance of your teleport, and then you have the exit of your teleport, which is another. Uh, circle item okay so um, I could place another circle item up here which could be the exit of my teleport so I want to somehow link them together and later in my game engine uh, once a teleport entrance is touched by the player the player gets immediately moved to the exit okay so in order to link them together I have a property of type item and now if I click here I get a small representation of my level okay and uh, this was circle 13 I guess let me see uh, basically when you move with your mouse over an item you see down here the name of the item uh, onto which your mouse is so it's circle 13 okay and now you can just uh, choose circle 13 and then it gets selected here so now um, you have 
kind of like a pointer to this other item.